Hi Flesh Talks, this is Sandy. Now then, I am a hands-on kind of person. Uh, being a kinesthetic person, I like to learn by seeing, hearing, feeling, doing, and then I like to teach you. So part of what I find magical about Flesh Talks is that you become your coach as well. You grab some of your friends, your family, and you start teaching them as well. All right, so what, what happens in your gut? Why does it matter the order of your eating? I have lots of people ask, what does it really matter? It's not a big deal. And um, you know, what's the difference? Uh, I eat healthy. What does the difference of the order make? So I'm going to give an example, first of all, of portion size and give it in relation to your digestive order. So the first thing that your body is going to be able to digest most quickly is a carbohydrate. So it's best if it's in a carbohydrate form that's um, plant-based, but in our, today, our society today, so many times we'll have a quick resource of carbohydrates such as a sugar or a soda something something that absorbs unusually quick and doesn't have to mix with your saliva I said it sort of quite uh, properly and it doesn't require a lot of times to process so the quicker your body can process your your sugars the smaller the amount that you need actually you don't need very much sugar at all you just need enough to keep your blood sugar stable it's a whole nother discussion so the point of drinking water first, when you drink your water, is to get your body lubricated so that you have gastric juices and that you can produce saliva that produces enzymes and antibacterials that keeps you from getting sick. So the antibacterials help to mix with your food so that you will have less chance of having food poisoning, for instance, because you're always going to have bacteria coming in your food, right? So you want to mix your saliva with your food. So eat smaller bites and chew it well, okay? Now then, you're also going to secrete an enzyme called amylase. Now amylase is produced by the pancreas and it's excreted by the, by the saliva glands. When you do not have good pancreatic digestive enzymes excreted because maybe you have used so many digestive enzymes over the years, digesting so many carbohydrates that perhaps you need some help. So that's where the plant enzymes come in handy prior to, the, to eating. Now, the plant enzymes help to aid your pancreas so that it takes some burden off your pancreas so it can rest. An overused pancreas will uh, produce less enzymes and it can, is more prone to virus and bacteria and worms, uh, parasites, indeed, and it can create pancreatitis. And pancreatitis is actually very deadly. If you get pancreat pancreatic cancer, it's one of the few cancers that they cannot treat. So if you start treating your pancreas a little bit kinder and any of your foods in easier portions to digest, perhaps you will enjoy a little bit more fun with your life with your pancreas. So, what does it matter on your eating portions and order? So we're gonna go over the carbohydrate first. So I have a wheat bran, all right? It's a no, it's a sure fine, it's not a big bran. And it says that three fourths of a cup is a serving. So I'm gonna take it to half a cup, even though I prefer to eat a fourth of a cup. Um, so it says that one, three-fourths cup, 17, let's see, three grams of protein. So if you eat a third of the cup, it's about one gram of protein. And it's 23 grams of carbohydrates. So it's about, it's gonna be roughly about nine to 13 grams of carbohydrates. So here you go. You've got your bran, okay? Sorry, I was, now then I want you to measure. Now you can't hardly see, and since I have a, difficult time in my kitchen because I don't have the same kitchen as I used to have. I'm going to measure right here, okay? <clears throat> so, one bite, two bites, three bites, four bites, five bites, 
six bytes, seven bytes, well, yeah, actually about eight bytes. So this is a half a cup, it's a three quarters of a one serving. Now remember that the serving right here is based on a 2,000 calorie diet a day. Now I have no desire to be man-like, so I don't eat 2,000 calorie portions, okay? So I usually eat eight bites, so I would measure by a baby's teaspoon. I really do. I really do. Ask my family. I do this. All right. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh oh. Uh oh. I dropped it. Five, six. Uh oh. Seven, my earphones get in the way. Eight. All right. So that leaves about that much of a cup. So minus the, the spike that I spilled, that's about right. So how cool is that? Eight bites with a baby spoon. Bam. Okay. And it's just two bites shy of a teaspoon. So every bite counts. Now then, I'm going to say we are going to use, I'm going to measure it this way. All right, so we're going to take the same amount of liquid. <clears throat> you need a little bit more liquid than you've got me. So I'm going to go just a little bit shy. So it's about a fourth a cup, half a cup of this. All right, so I'm going to show you what this happens. This is um, the water in this would be your milk or your almond milk or whatever you do to make your cereal. All right, so, got it? Now this in your stomach. You've got see-through glass stomach, all right? So do you see whenever you start chewing your food, pretend like my big old long fingers are food, uh, food chewers called teeth. All right, so, you do this and you went about 15 minutes. So you're gonna chew your food really well. And then you're gonna have the right portions of liquid in your stomach so that you can, uh, you don't wanna eat a lot of dry food because it's hard on your stomach, but you don't want a lot of liquid with your food because it dilutes the digestive enzymes, okay? So after about 15 minutes of churning, you go do this at home. This is a really pretty cool exercise. It's going to feel slipperier. It's going to start feeling kind of um, scrubby, kind of like a mask maybe. Uh, I'm not sure you can see this, but I'm not going to do all 15 minutes of this example. Now then, this is, this is a serving in your stomach. Or this, is, this would be my size serving. Um, remember, it'd be like two more bites for a uh, little bit larger person serving, and it would be like eight more bites to make a man serving. So it's really, you might be overeating a little bit, right? Now then, now what's cool about this, see, we start getting this kind of a, see it's stuck together. What happens is that we want to create with the fiber and with the nutrients that you're getting, we want your colon, I'm gonna put it down so I can use both hands. We want your colon to use fiber in your food as resistance training. So it's actually tonifying your colon. Cool, huh? So it's like lifting weights for your guts, right? So you're gonna be lifting weights for your guts, but when you are eating their food, Hang on, I gotta wash my hands because it's kind of grody commodey. All right, so what you're doing is you are creating resistance for your for your belly, and that belly. I don't have any sponges handy, but that belly becomes like a sponge. Okay, the the fiber in the belly becomes like a sponge. And the nutrients are mushed all in that. So we're going to use the words prebiotic and probiotic. 
when you have a probiotic, it helps to put more bacteria into your gut so that there's gonna be more bubbles, all right? So the bacteria is gonna be like putting little air bubbles in your body so that your body is going to have more oxygen. And the whole point of eating your food is to get energy and oxygen has to be utilized to have energy. So we have nitric oxide, like our lasers, the energy laser produces nitric oxide. Um, green drink is full of nitric oxide. It is fabulous. You can go outside and get in the sunshine and there's some nitric oxide. So it's creating um, a catalyst for your, for your cells, the ATP to boom, start working. So whenever you have your food in portion and you're able to actually get some exercise out of it, out of your colon, and you get more oxygen out of your foods and the uptake of the oxygen, you're gonna have a little bit more room when you have fiber to have more room for oxygen to be uptaken. Now, the villi, let's say here's your gut lining, here's your colon they're really small my hands are really long but you've got these villi and these villi have little tiny tubules on it and these little tiny tubules need room so that they get <laughs> suck the air suck your food into the capillaries and then it can go in through your blood supply to the parts of your brain now whenever it gets compacted with flour sugar cheese gooey foods sugar uh, sugars stuff like that it will cause those tubules those little suckers they're called villi to get stuck it's like sucking in gobstoppers instead of air bubbles so you want to give your body room to absorb so the fundamentals of flesh tox is actually very scientific but it's founded on a bodybuilding program because bodybuilders have to eat their food to make bigger muscles, all right? So if you're sitting next to a bodybuilder and you're watching how they eat, then you're gonna start noticing that they might have the same foods that you eat, but they eat them differently. So if you will start eating your foods a little differently, and might I add that you challenge yourself, maybe consider a bodybuilding competition. Maybe not so much that you go put on a little bitty tiny uh, bikini and go show everybody, you know, your muscles, but do it so that you can learn how to build muscles and you can learn and hang around with the best. Because it says, uh, science says that you become a, was a sum total or an average of the five people you spend the most time around. So if you spend your time around sick people, most likely you're going to learn sick habits. If you spend your time around successful people that have good lifestyle habits, then you're gonna learn how to be healthy and have good lifestyle habits. And I don't know about you, but our goal on this earth is to be legacy builders so that our children's children will be healthy. And if they don't learn lifestyle from you, then who are they gonna learn it from? All right, so just think inside of portions. Friday begins um, our, what is it? Our, our first of the month new month new goals new roles and not new rules but i would like for you to consider um, committing another 30 days to flesh hikes but this time i want your goals and if you're not going to participate i would also like to probably create a group or trim this group back down to the group that wants to participate most so that you get the most out of you out of this experience all right, so go measure your cereal. Go try this out. It's pretty cool. And um, you'll also find that whenever you start doing your food like this, I mean, you don't play with it at the dinner table, but this actually is moisturizing. This um, brand is actually very moisturizing. So if you're on a wheat only, uh, avoid wheat diet, I'm not sure that I would choose wheat bran, but I'm a type A blood and I don't eat oats very well. Well, it says peanut butter and honey yeah all right okay guys well comment below i do expect more participation because we're ramping it up we're getting into the cold and flu season and i don't know about you but i'm going to be healthy wealthy and wise and i'm taking you with us bye guys